Just to reiterate what we've learned so far, we have created our Angular application using Angular CLI. We also created our Express server and connected our Express server with the Angular application. And in the previous section, we also created our Mongo database. So next, we are going to create the REST APIs. Whenever a user makes a request to the server, be it get, post, put, or delete, the server needs to interact with MongoDB to perform the required operation. For this interaction, we make use of Mongoose. Now Mongoose is just another NPM package that provides MongoDB object mapping. Or in simpler words, Mongoose translates data in the database to a JavaScript object for use in our application. Now there are alternatives like MongoJS and native Mongo client but Mongoose is quite simple once you understand how it works. Now to install Mongoose package, type npm install dash dash save space Mongoose in your project folder. So open command prompt in the ng app folder and the command is npm install dash dash save Mongoose. All right, that's the installation. Now, I did just say that data or a document in MongoDB is represented as a JavaScript object. So first, we need to have a blueprint or a schema of the object in the database. So go back to Visual Studio Code and in the server folder, we are going to create another folder and name it models. Within the models folder, create a file and name it video.js. Now over here, first we are going to require mongoose that was just installed. So const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. Next, I'm going to get an instance of mongoose schema. So const schema is equal to mongoose.schema. And then we're going to create a new schema for the video data in MongoDB. So using video schema or const video schema is equal to a new schema which is nothing but the mongo schema and this schema is going to contain a title a url and description basically this is the blueprint of the object in our mongo database next create a model from the schema so we are going to say module.exports mongoose.model video video schema and videos now mongoose.model is used to create a model and the name of the model is video. It is going to represent the video schema. Basically, a video model is going to have a title, a URL and description. The third argument to mongoose.model is the name of the collection in the Mongo database. So we did create a videos collection in the previous section. So I have mentioned it over here. And finally, we assign this to module.exports because this model is going to be used elsewhere. So now I have a Mongoose model that can be used to create, read, update, and delete documents in the database. The only remaining task is to connect to the database that has been created. Now all database requests are going to be managed in the API route. So the database connection happens in api.js file. So in the server folder, in the routes folder, we have api.js. Over here, first we are going to request mongoose. So const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. Next, we need the URL to the Mongo database. So if you go back to MLab and click on the video player database, MLab is going to say the string that has to be used to connect to this particular database. So over here, if you have a look, MongoDB provided by DB user, DB password, and so on. So go back to Visual Studio Code, and over here, create const DB is equal to the string, and replace username with the username, and password with the password for the user that has access to the database. So user Vishwas and PW Vishwas. Next, I'm going to create something called a promise type. So mongoose.promise is equal to global.promise. And this is just to avoid any warnings that Mongoose is going to throw at us. 
And finally, we are going to connect to the database using mongoose.connect and pass the DB string. Now, if there is an error, we are going to log to the console what the error is. If there is no error, then the connection was successful. So now I can make a request to localhost 3000 slash API. So localhost 3000 slash API. Now, if I go to the console, I don't have an error in the console, which means to say that the connection was successful. Now that the connection has been established to the database, I will show you how to code the RESTful APIs to create, read, update, and delete documents from the database and also simultaneously test using something called Postman.